please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 540. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Jim. And I'm Brian. Wait, what? Yes, I I heard... Oh. I heard from uh, a newer listener that uh, the podcast needs more Jim. It did. It did. Uh, less Blake, obviously. Yes, because... Blake's not here this week. Um, <clears throat> I, I did not listen last week because uh-huh. I didn't feel like listening to 45 minutes of Blake talk. Well, the good news is you can go to our podcast gym on uh, Apple. Yes. Uh, and if you scroll down, transcript, and you can read the whole transcript Ooh. of the sto- of the uh, podcast now. If you don't want to listen to 45 minutes of Blake, play it in double time so you only listen yeah. to 22 and a half minutes. And then I'll skip on, and then I'll have to listen to like an hour worth of Jason. Oh, well, that's going to be terrible. I mean, Earl Anthony, is he still alive? I'm not sure. Well, if he wasn't, he's rolling in his grave. He's rolling over. He's gutter balling in his grave. Oh, yeah. I meant to uh, discuss this. Um, Old man Blake has no idea what he's talking about when he talks about bowling. He died in 2001. Oh, yes, he did. (laughs) I'm just reading the transcript now. But it's a fun little thing. But Blake arguing that people are throwing two handed, that there are only two holes in balls for two handed guys, that people use multiple balls to throw strikes and spares. This has been going on for 40 years. Yes. Yes. And that he hasn't realized that until now. Yeah. And it's everybody else's fault. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how it works usually, right? No. In America? No. I don't know this happened, so it's everyone else's fault. (laughs) Yes. So. Yeah, I'm I'm so uh, ignorant of a subject. (laughs) That I'm just going to badmouth what everybody else does about it. Have you ever met social media? (laughs) (laughs) That is the definition of social media. But this wasn't, this was podcast, I guess podcasting can be social media. (laughs) Hey, Brian, I know you're surprised surprised by this, but people talk bad on social media. They do? Yeah. No, I've never seen it. I don't believe that. So, I mean, I would never believe that. No, no. I, I feel like it's a good. Joining of yeah, people, it's, it's it's the greatest. It's, it is good, the greatest um, gathering of the brightest minds. Yes, <laughs> that's in a very tiny pocket over <laughs> that you can never find. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you're saying he was wrong? Uh, yes. Okay. Blake is actually going to be here. He's just going to be seven to eight hours late. So uh, he's I stuck in it, traffic. It's yeah. really really bad traffic. So he'll be here in seven to eight hours. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody has bottles now around their table, so you can pee in it, so not to waste time if everybody saw that. Well, I was eight hours late, so I need to not waste time. So it came out today on the com that The Rock, uh, they sub- supposedly substantiated this through several sources on the set, that uh, The Rock, uh, on his latest film, Red One, I think, which sounds awful. It, that came out in uh, like 2020. Or Red Notice. Red Notice. That, Red Notice. Yeah. Is that the new one? That's the new one. No, no. no that, Red, that, Red, Red Notice came out in 2020, I thought. Yeah. 
Red, Red One is Red a new, one, one, is coming a new out. one coming out. Yeah, that's the sequel. Yes. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't even know. I didn't even know about any of them. Yeah. So, well, way to keep up to date. <laughs> so it sounded I'm awful, confused. like be- because of the way that <laughs> it he, sounded horrible. The movie, sorry, because yeah. of the way he acted on Red Notice, him and Ryan Reynolds didn't speak. Yes, and the the movie was so well received on Netflix, it immediately got a sequel, and they haven't because that of how big their riff was. They have pushed it back this far. Wow! And they finally have. I'm using air quotes. They mm. have patched up their differences. Differences. Is Gal Gadot in this too? I believe so. But but I'm still confused. Mm-hmm. The sequel is called Red One, but it's the second film. Yes. Uh, no. Should be called Red Leader. Sure. Or, Red, or Red, Red Five. Two. I mean, Rogue One's not a sequel. No, it's one. It is yeah, one. It's well, one. it's a prequel, I guess. Well, it's the first movie. Is it? Well, you got the the tril- the prequels, but it's a standalone movie. Okay, so you can make so, a Rogue Two movie. Hold on, I, wait a minute. Brian's got something. I sit, I sit corrected. Okay, what's going Red on? Red One is not Ryan Reynolds, or it's uh, the Rock and Chris Evans. It's oh. Red One is their Christmas movie. Yes. Okay. So Red Notice is, but that's in the article that I was that I read, not the one on the rap. Mm-hmm. That was saying that. Um, it was talking about Red Notice and so, their sequel and all that. Yeah, so Red Notice, supposedly he was showing up five hours late, yeah. and Ryan Reynolds got mad at him, and they had a huge argument. Why would you get mad for somebody who's showing up five hour, five to nine hours late? No no issue. How many times did you call him Axl Rose? Oh. Uh, and then on Red One with Chris Evans, he's showing up seven hours late, even though he always talks about how – The Rock always talks about how you know you got to be on time and all this. He's the hardest worker. Well, then to save time on the set, the, the story goes to say that he started peeing in cups – or I'm sorry, in bottles and basically giving the bottles to his assistants to dispose of. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you know, when you're doing all the all the action scenes uh-huh. and you're in your costumes, you don't uh-huh. want to stop to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, well, if you showed up eight hours early, maybe or on time. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been peeing in cups in here for almost 300 episodes. Is that what's nailed to the walls? Is the cups? What is that? Wait, I've just been going on the floor. I blame oh. it on the dogs. Yeah, I'm just confused. It shows on how you we you don't clean <laughs> an entire shift late. <laughs> Like everybody who was there to film probably clocked out and left, and now you get the, to, the night shift. Maybe he thought it was two p.m. and not two a.m. or two a.m. and not oh, two. So he p.m. thought he was four hours early. Yeah, yeah, I'm early. Uh, yeah, yeah, what happens if at my job if you show eight hours late, <laughs> you just missed your shift <laughs> and if you get you sh- fired. If you show up eight hours late to my shift, we're closed. Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I've got the keys, so. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that didn't look good. And then WWE actually had to come out today and state that, despite rumors, The Rock did not show up late to WrestleMania. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> WWE had to make a press uh, press release. Like, well, oh. he was there in time to go on. Correct. So he wasn't late. Correct. So. Granted, he wasn't there when everybody else showed up four hours early Correct. for the planning meeting, but yep. he was there for his time on. I see delay. nothing wrong with any of this. I'm sure it will all be blow over soon. It will be fine. I mean, to his, to his uh, uh, defense, uh-huh. he's trying to run a football league now. That is true. That is true. Along get- with a tequila brand, a mm-hmm. skincare brand. WWE. WWE. Yep. Um, he just signed Drew McIntyre to extension for WWE. I don't know how he did it because he's not in charge of negotiations, but he did it supposedly. Well, yeah, and he's band. and he he's running a huge uh, movie franchise with Black Adam. And Can't wait for the sequel. Do you think he shows up in Shazam three? <laughs> Do you think Shazam three gets made? Do you think Shazam three shows up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I don't think. Uh, but Zach Levy shows up for Shazam 3. <laughs> no, he will. <laughs> he was he, like, he's the only person showing up. No, cameraman does. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. sorry, Rock. Hardest worker in the room. Yes. All yes. right. Now, I got to ask. I'm changing the subject here because Jim's back from his suspension. Uh-huh. And he brought gifts. Are they gifts? I don't know. Well, first, I was going to start by talking about stuff I watched. No, oh, okay. And, and stuff in the news how NCI people are upset that NCIS Hawaii just got canceled. Oh, okay. 
and then they're pissed off at his last episode that they killed off like a bunch of people in Hawaii. Yes. Okay. But I also watched NCIS Australia. Okay. And that's okay. Good day, mate. It, again, it's just I don't. I guess they had to make it because they could film down there mm-hmm. during the strike, so they could release it, so they could put it out. Mm-hmm. It was okay. But in honor of that, we're going to try some Vegemite and cheese are not shapes. It's Aussie legends. Whoa. <laughs> I oh pass this one to Jeff. Pass one to Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> one to Jeff. What is shape? Is that? Uh, it's a shape. Is this a warthog? It just says shapes. Um, this looks like Wisconsin to me. This looks like a warthog. When I was a young it's warthog. A kangaroo. Oh, you got a kangaroo? Sure. I Is didn't. the Twitter logo? Maybe it's a wallaby. That guy does look like Twitter logo, doesn't it? Eh. It looks like a bird on the end. Um, do you, I don't know about this. Aussie Legends. Let's see here. All right. It's cheese and Vegemite? That's what we're <laughs> you, going for? The, you have a very small... F- Vegemite flavor. Too. Mm-hmm. I've never had Vegemite like before. Cheese. It's like a. It's okay. a yeast product. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's not bad. No, it's not. Nothing horrible. Mm. Mm. This I is mean, a chewing podcast now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of dry. That's why I'll have it's water. Got water, but mm-hmm. yeah. Is it something I would elect to eat for? Any other reason other than someone just dared me to try it? I no. mean, but I, it's not bad. I mean, it's, oh. it's a it's a crunchy cheese, like, yeah, che- cheese it type. I think this is sheep. <laughs> That's the same shape. I know <laughs> they're all the same shape. Uh, you, no, there's a different shape. Australia. It's the shape of Australia. Is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, where it's trying to be. What's the little you two legs? It upside down. Yeah, that was that wasn't bad. That, that's the bay at the north end of uh, no, Australia. No, so. I think it's feet. <laughs> I'm a sheep. <laughs> you, you can stop that at any, at any yeah. point in time. That one's a special Vegemite one. But they're all Vegemite No, ones. that's a super special one. It's darker or just burnt. So I decided to get these rather than just get a jar of Vegemite with toast. Oh, God. We appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. These aren't bad. No. I mean, I they're, mean they're like Cheez-Its. I'm going like to try Jesus another one. It'll probably be the last one I ever eat in my mm-hmm. life, but I'll try one more. Are you dying? No, I'll just never eat these oh, again. Oh, okay. okay. Don't go anywhere, Jeff. I can't do DJ Fat Fingers without you. What? Is... Yeah, it's not horrible. What does that mean? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, because he is DJ Fat Fingers. He is DJ Fat Fingers. Trademark. Trademark. I will say, mm-hmm. second cracker... Now that I know what I was expecting to eat, tastes a lot better than the first. I agree. I agree. I still wouldn't eat it. Like, I wouldn't go out of my way to go, like, oh, I got to go get these at the store. But it's not bad. Not a great aftertaste. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like, it kind of no. leaves. Like, they are oven baked, not fried. Fantastic. So, these are some healthy snacks to give your kids, Jason. Okay. Great. Great. Yes. Convince them to eat that it. That Vegemite shapes are. Are well, I don't sheep. Know. <laughs> They're sheep. C- convince them that they are like uh-huh. junk food and they shouldn't eat them, but then actually feed it to them so they get healthy, healthy snacks. Ooh, what do we got next? Next, I'm going to move on to the. Uh, oh no! Oh yeah! Oh no! The uh, the, the Thai Thai the, Kai Noi big roll. It's a grilled seaweed roll, uh, barbecue flavored. Hold on. We're going to do this. We're going to go live here. Should Brian avoid this? I don't know. I'm, I'm checking the ingredients. I mean, it's, it's probably... seaweed. It's probably... It's not... I uh, don't know if I would eat that if I were you, Brian. I don't want no, to No, no. We're good. Yeah, it's it's all in the seaweed and, and uh, it contains soybean, flavors. sesame, and then flavors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, soybean and sesame. Yeah. No, we're good. This, I don't think we're good. Barbecue roll, grilled seaweed roll. I definitely taste the barbecue and the seaweed. Oh, does seaweed taste like anything? Oh, yeah. Moss. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's hot. Ryan, do you have your EpiPen with you? I don't. Please don't die. <laughs> that is the biggest crap. What? <laughs> it doesn't smell good. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Liar. Barbecue. It tastes like seaweed. If you like barbecue. Is seaweed good for you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it? 
Oh. This looks awful. Oh. Brian, I'm what you think? I'm having a problem with the barbecue sauce, not the seaweed. No, mine was the seaweed. I could definitely taste the seaweed. I can taste it, but the problem I have is... Uh, I don't... I mean... I get to, I get, I get to kind of the sushi flavoring. Are you breaking out into hives, Brian? No. I, would you rather break out into hives and eat this? No. Actually, I wouldn't. I don't wish that on anybody. That's just a big old log of seaweed. It's it's. I would I would prefer like a spicier barbecue. It takes like almost oh. too sweet for me. Oh, that's the opposite for me. Oh, I, I, I'm like, yeah, that's. I don't like the spice on that barbecue sauce. Barbecue I think sauce. I'd, I think I'd rather just have a salty seaweed than this barbecue. <laughs> I mean, sauce. Honestly, the barbecue was the most not offensive flavor to me. Uh, there were some that were like Brian could not have eaten. You know, if I do the right angle, Jeff, it looks like Ross Marquan is actually in our in our studio. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ross. Some seaweed. <laughs> here, let me get it up. There we go. Uh, Jason, what do you think? Uh, hold on. Let me try it here. <laughs> you want me to hold your phone while you... Sure. Sure. To, to do it. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. <laughs> You're right down there? Oh, I'm just... I'm gearing up for what it's about to blow my eardrums out with. Oh, it's broken. It doesn't look appetizing. It looks like seaweed. Yeah, it doesn't look That's appetizing. It is. Boy, that was the really biggest bite you took. Not a fan of the texture when you bite into it. Texture is breaking. Texture it, was the best part. The texture is no problem. It's a really overpowering barbecue, that which I guess is better than overpowering seaweed. I had more. Again, I had tasted the barbecue. Didn't bother me. It was like kind of the after okay. seaweed taste. Yeah. yeah, that was great. That was that was lovely. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I, I don't know if my seaweed roll is going to be finished. Oh, mine is not. <laughs> oh, I finished mine. I want to see if my son wants any out here. Hey, kid, come here. You want some food? Now go get in here. You're having some food. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, oh Jim. Just- Jim, what do we got? We've got the Nongshim Cuttlefish Snacks. <laughs> what? <laughs> Brian, you get to take this one here, off. Here, try this. Try this. Ew. No, try it. Come here. It's just I'm fried my seaweed 14 year old in here. Try it. You gotta try it. It's, it's here, a, it's a If you want chip. good stuff in here, you gotta... Tr- you gotta eat the bad stuff yeah. before you can have some good stuff. It's like the movies. No. Oh. Come on. It's seaweed. Barbecue Ew, seaweed. No, 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 no. no. You've never, had, you've had, never seaweed. had seaweed. I like how my son goes, oh, I hate seaweed. You've never had it. Hey, Jim, go unplug his PlayStation. I'm, can I just take it? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You know what we're going to do? Next week, we're broadcasting out there. <laughs> okay, so uh, while, we, while we eat the uh, cuttlefish God. snack, Brian is going to have some of these wonderful... Uh, I'm going to have some uh, Jolly Ranger gummies <laughs> uh, that were sent to us uh, from Dr. Dana. Ooh. Why, thank you. Wow, she really is going for a, another... Uh, All the gummies? We've re- another Canadian. completely refilled the jar of, of Jolly Ranchers after Jim, let me see. many months of them being out of stock. What do you want? Let me see the bag of cuttlefish again. All right, here we go. So Oops. while while these guys are uh, trying their... It doesn't taste like anything. They're fish of whatever they're eating. Needs a little salt, and this would just be like a, a I feel lay, like tomorrow. Like the Lay's puffy. The, the Lay's. Oh. They made the cube or the balls or whatever. They yeah, like, I feel like tomorrow is going to be a very the things bad day. full of air. Yeah, we did have a social media poll mm. of the week this week. It's no flavor. There's no flavor. The smell. There's a little yeah, smell when you sm- bite the into it. The smell was it. And was, yeah. And it's not a bad smell. It's just a fishy smell. It has a little fishy smell, but... Make sure you don't keep those in here so it doesn't smell oh, up the Oh, they're the garbage. Okay, good call. <laughs> they're not horrible, though. And that's why we want to wrap them up and leave them for uh, Blake and Doug. You know what? I feel like that would be uh, punishment for Doug, you yeah. know? Seaweed, you know, for all that fucking ranch ice cream that he got us. Oh, God, that was awful. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, the, the cuttlefish is fine. It's just the smell is awful. If you eat a piece of the cuttlefish uh-huh. and then a Jolly Rancher gummy and then the piece uh-huh. of the cuttlefish, uh, you just clean your palate between each. I'll uh, be honest. I'm going to open up a second box of this. Uh, these just so Why are you opening up a second box when we have an entire fucking jug full of them? Because it's too far down. So I'm just eating these. Uh, we got some cuttlefish here. It's good for you. It's healthy. I see how it Okay, no more food for a second. About Dr. Dana. <laughs> Those look good. The banana snacks. Oh. 
Oh, no more food once we get to the good stuff. Wait a minute, hold on. I might have a banana snack there. Okay, let's do one more and then we'll get into the sh- thing. Uh, here, you gotta try cuttlefish if you want any gummies. Pick one. It's cuttlefish. It doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. Just bite into it. You gotta put it, the whole thing in your mouth. That's what oh, she said. Oh, don't say that to your child. <laughs> It's not bad. There's no flavor. My son's tasting it. It just smells bad, right? Yeah. No. Okay. You don't get any gummies. Sorry. <laughs> um, um, what do you got um, last thing for right now? Banana chim, banana kick, banana snacks. Added a lot of banana flavor. These are like uh, puffs, like banana puffs. Mm. Okay. We like banana. Oh, cheese puffs, but banana flavor. Mind if we dance with your dates? No, we were just leaving. Oh, that is so good. These are pretty good. Where'd you get these? Oh, same place? Yeah, it's... Where the are these Nong from? Shim. We got them from Jungle Gyms. They're Korean, I my guess. Those are delightful. And they're in the shape of bananas. They're cheese puffs. It's yeah. kind of what they look like. They're banana puffs. These look fun. And, um, again, it's the same brand that makes these and the cuttlefish snacks. They were like two for three dollars. Oh, these are good. Mm-hmm. Don't eat the cuttlefish, Brian. I'm looking at the ingredients. I think cuttlefish is one of them. <laughs> Actually, it's not. It's shark. It's weird. Minced cuttlefish. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. These bananas are delightful. See? I, I, I bring some good stuff, too. Seriously. I could yeah. eat a whole bag of these. Yeah. These are very good. It oh, tastes like banana. It smells like banana. I like Get it. no smell from it. I like it. Mm-hmm. Well done, Jimmy. Well done. We still have a few more, but we'll get to those later on. Yeah. And we got other shows we can do. We got other ones. My goodness, because those might be look good, too. Brian, what did you watch this week? Anything exciting? Uh, Not really. Nothing new. Just catching up on the DVR. Okay. Trying to knock some, some stuff out. Trying to catch up on Blue Bloods. Oh. Uh, a okay. couple seasons behind on that, I realized. So. <laughs> Does he still have a stash? Oh, of course. Tom, great. Yeah. Great. Uh, but... Nothing of uh, of of note that was new. Okay. Um. Yeah. Nothing really on on my end. Uh, J- Jeff, anything? What I'm going to do is I'm going to try this grape Jolly Rancher gummy and this uh, <laughs> barbecue seaweed at the same time. <laughs> if it works out, it will be in the Hello Jeff box next week. <laughs> Jim, anything else you watched this week? Um, I finished. Got caught up on the rookie. Okay. Oh yeah. Are I, you enjoying it? Oh yeah. It's okay. it's a good. I watched the first three Just episodes. Renewed. The first three episodes of X Men ninety seven. What's your thoughts? Eh. I, it it didn't bring me anything to make me watch anymore. Uh, it gets better. The four and five episodes. Five is really balls to the wall. But um, again, you give it a three episode uh, no, challenge, agree. and then it's just kind of eh. I've enjoyed it. Um, I really, it's gotten better as I've gone on. And I think part of it is just because I have such a love for the 97 one, even though when you go back and watch, it's not that great. Oh, I thought uh, 97 was bleh itself. So. Yeah. I can see that. Um, I didn't dislike it. I just, there's she, some parts I didn't like. Jean but. Grey still annoys me. Um, I can't stand her. That's what I'll say. I was a fan of the X Men comics before that cartoon came out. Mm-hmm. That cartoon, I thought was inferior mm-hmm. and i was never a big fan of it because i didn't think it did a real good job of interpreting the comics okay and i think about half the voice acting they had at least back then mm-hmm. was not good okay like gambit was awesome gambit was awesome oh, he was the best yes the voice uh, acting was not good <laughs> uh um, the, the wolverine wasn't good Their he was australian cops wasn't good. hey bub <laughs> well that was the did I get that one done? He did. Uh, Pride of the X-Men short they did. That wasn't actually the show. They did get a different voice actor from the Australian guy. I like the X-Men, E-X-M-E-N skits. I like that better. <laughs> from, uh, what's that comedian? Pete Holmes when, yeah. he, fi- when he fires them all. <laughs> so uh, you're made of metal, right, Wolverine? Uh, you, know our number, you know what our villain is, right, Magneto? <laughs> you know what his power is, right? <laughs> Well, I'll run at him. <laughs> I have a motorcycle. Do you know what a motorcycle is made of? Tubes. <laughs> I, I hear you say tubes. 
<laughs> and I, I want to believe it. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways. Well, by the way, the seaweed and Jolly Ranch yeah. gummy did not work Did out. not work out. <laughs> do uh, not recommend zero stars. You know, I do recommend the Cincinnati Comic Expo. It's coming October 18th through the 20th. Get your tickets now at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Just announced Alan Davis, artist and writer Ooh. Alan Davis. Alan uh, Davis, uh, original uh, artist on the Excalibur comic. That's correct. Fantastic Four, Avengers. Um, yeah. And so uh, we also have Mira Sorvino is coming to the expo. My dear Aphrodite. Yes. Mimic. Nice. Romeo or Michelle. I'm not sure which one she was. Both. No, um, that is incorrect. The so replacement. Uh, she was in that. The replacement killers. I was going to say, not the replacements. The replacements. I, w- I did watch that again this week. It was oh, on. I yeah. had to watch it. Mm-hmm. You watch it if it's on. Hey, Red means stop. Uh, let's see here. Ray Chase, voice actor for Cyclops. Uh, he's there. He's coming. I, I, I hope he's not the one who did it in the 90s. So I just Shh, shut up. It. Shut up. <laughs> Jennifer Morrison is going to be there. Uh, she's the actress from Once Upon a Time, uh, How I Met Your Mother, This Is Us. This is, That's Blake's favorite show. And House. It's always lupus. It's always lupus. Always lupus. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, Chuck Norris is going to be there. Hi-ya! Uh, what, what more need to be said about him? So, uh, get your tickets. Ming Now Win is going to be there. Uh, we have lots. Katie Sackoff. Yes. We have lots of Funkos to give away. Yes. I, I brought my box last week. Yeah. Too, too many Funkos, in my opinion. I mean, there's one for almost everybody now. You get a Funko? Except you... there is no Chuck Norris Funko. Really? There's not. There's wow. not. Because Chuck Norris is too good to fit in Funko size. Uh, yeah. So just want to let you know, uh, Matt Wagner is also going to be their artist and writer. He's a uh, creator of the comic series Mage, as well as Grendel. Uh, he also worked Ooh. on... Yeah, Grendel is oh, good. that's some original runs of Grendel. Those were good. Um, Old Man Brad. He will, he will be there. He will be there. We like old man Brad. Uh, he will be there. Uh, no, I saved the last for you, Jason. Oh, thank uh, you. The banana kicks. Those are really good. Hi, I'm Brad. Hi, I'm Brad. Oh, you wanted me to hit the button? Could no, you? Oh. I wanted to say it. Oh. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Brad. I'm Brad. Nope. Hi, I'm Brad. No, he doesn't say hi. Yes, he does. So, I I think I in my mind I think he's nicer than he really is. So he's yeah. saying hi, but yeah. Um, he's this, he's the nicest Broncos fan I know. <laughs> hey, they got Bo Nix. What more do you need? Bo Nix is going to lead them to the promised land. Michael Penix Jr. Uh, Kirk Cousins doesn't. <laughs> Poor Kurt. Uh, we had a poor pl- Kirk. Yeah, Kurt. <laughs> poor. You mean poor Kirk? Two hundred and eighty million dollar Kurt. Poor one hundred million dollar guaranteed. To be fair to Kirk. Cousins, his feelings are hurt. <laughs> That's okay. They may cut him after only giving him a hundred million. His money. That money is still going to spend the same, whether his feelings are good or bad. Yeah. Jim's trying the popping candies from. <laughs> I can hear them popping candy cola. The best is if you're Kurt, you're like, you know what? Bench me. Put Penix in. You know why? I'll sit on the bench for $100 million for two years. Have a good day. I mean, he's not going to do that. I, it, no. It was poorly handled by the Falcons, oh, I, but yes. he he retched, or Penix retched out to him, Yeah, and they talked, and yeah. it's, it's... It's not going to be an Aaron Rodgers, no, Jordan Love, or... No, be, that, and that's... Part of that is, like, the media making it, trying correct. to make it into Whoa, something. whoa, 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 whoa. What? what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so these I, are some Bida, B-A-I-D-A, uh, popping candies. I don't know how to open it. Cola? Cola flavored. It's at the top, Jeff. It's right there. It's right, right there. Let's see. There's a little tab. Oh, I have it upside down. <laughs> it's like Australia. <laughs> yep. Um, we had a poll of the week while you guys eat those. If you had a $10,000, uh, if you had $10,000 $10, you had to spend, what would you buy? This is a Bad Ideas podcast. We had all the Oreos. We had Taylor Swift tickets. Flamethrowing Robot Dog, because that's now something you can buy for $10,000. It's actually 9975 And other. Uh, there was one other uh, option on that poll. What's that? Buy Jason singing lessons. It Anyways. Got, it got one vote. <sighs> Anyways. All the Oreos and Taylor Swift tickets got 11%. 
flamethrowing robot dog got 44%, while other got 34%. So everybody wants a flamethrowing robot dog. Um, $10,000 would not be enough to get Jason proper singing lessons. How about impression lessons? It's uh, We'd need 10 times Michael that amount. Michael Caine. Michael Yeah, Quinn. we would need at least 20000 to get you... Uh, 100000 to make it sound somewhat... <sighs> Dust. God, I hate him so much. Gold I'm dust? liking these popping candies, though. What gold dust do to you? They are they're flavorful. <sighs> Tastes like cola. Tastes like and banana. Pop. Tastes like banana. Okay, mm. moving on. Brian, you got some listener feedback for us? I just put this into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that started for you. Bam. No. Listener feedback. It's sponsored by. Uh, Hello, Jeff. Jeff, what's in your box this week? And that sounded dirty. It's not seaweed. Good. That's good to know. Is it like a food that just says "not seaweed" on the yep. cover? Ba- okay. It is white packaging, black letters, "not seaweed," and you can't see into it, right? Not until you open it up. And there's no ingredient list on that at all. There is. It says "not seaweed." <laughs> Good luck, He's, Brian. No cuttlefish either. <laughs> squid? I octopus? Can't, can't guarantee that it's not squid oh. or octopus. Uh, okay. I, I think I'll be skipping my box this week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then you can do that with Hello, Jeff. Yeah. If you, if you ever... F- if you need to skip a week, you can just say, don't send this box. You will not be charged. Yeah, absolutely. It will not be sent. It's very convenient. Yeah. Now, you don't know what's coming yet. Do you know what's coming and then you pause it or... You never know what it... But, I mean... We don't you, tell you, you what's you in know the box. what's coming when I announce it on the show. That's true. That's true. Um, we've oh. had ten thousand phone calls of people saying, "Please pause it this week." So, uh, listeners, uh, just give us a call. Uh, we're based in Pueblo, uh, New Mexico, and uh, what? customer service calls will help you out there. What one eight hundred Hello Jeff? Uh, what? Brian, what you got over there? What is he talking about? <laughs> Babbling. Oh, okay. Uh, so we always Call start off uh, listener feedback with that popping noise. Uh, Number one fan? That, that one guy. Can't give yourself a nickname? Uh, Ape hands. Ape bit. Be- uh, beaver hands. Seven. Beaver tail. Beaver, <laughs> beaver feet. Jewel beaver. of the licking. The the jewel of the licking. Postman. Kurt, the Kurt Rambus expert. Yes. Sunny the, D. The Kurt Rambo expert. Oh. Kurt Rambo expert, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, isn't he also Chili Billy? Chili Billy? That's right. That's the right. Thought Provoker. Doug? He always delivers twice. Dad? There you go. Uh, I see he didn't do his homework from last week either. Oh, no. He What's his a, homework? His homework was tasked. He, he was tasked with giving us all of his nicknames. Oh. Yeah, he needs to do that. Yeah. Uh, so Doug says, why are the Bills helping the Chiefs by trading with them in the draft? Is this more evidence that the league is fixed? So the Bills traded down with the Chiefs, and the Chiefs ended up taking a, a speedy wide receiver. So there was rumors on social media that this shows that, you know, it's fixed, the league, and they're just trying to get the Chiefs more powerful since they lost Tyreek Hill. Years but, the, ago. but the Bills got a, a draft pick ahead of theirs in return, so they got somebody else to improve their team And also. they also got a wide receiver as well. Yeah. So and To be fair, uh huh. they um, – they actually they actually helped the Bengals by doing that because the Chiefs wanted to draft to jump up ahead and draft Marius Mims, who the Bengals drafted at eighteen. Oh, so the Bengals they helped the Bengals out gotcha. as well. Okay, the Bills did so. Thank yeah. you, Buffalo. There you go. And we also got the mutant on the Bengals team too. Yeah, their offensive line is very large. Their defensive tackles. Yeah, pretty impressive. The offensive line, the uh, the new nickname for the tackles. It's no longer Brown County. Okay. It is now the Cincinnati Skyline. I like it. Thank okay. you, Ted Karros. He pulled up both those nicknames for him. And Oh, I like that. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Uh, let's see here. From Little Richard 205 at Not That Richard. Oh. Uh, Richard. He says people can now buy a robot dog with a flamethrower for $10,000. What would you do with this robot if you had it? Arson. <laughs> it's always the answer with you, Jeff. Well, s'mores. Ooh. This robot is kind of freaky. I don't know why you would put a flamethrower on it, but you did. They did. 
Um, they put a flamethrower on it for arson reasons. Oh, sorry. My bad. Uh, but yeah, it's a robotic dog. Looks creepy. Uh, it moves around. Hey, Brian, have you ever put a flamethrower on a dog? So, uh, no. I guess that's a no. I don't know what I would do with this. I'd, I'd make s'mores. I don't know. Start fires. I like the s'mores idea. I don't know. It seems like a waste of $10,000 to me. It's only 9975 to be fair. Well, with shipping. And tax. tax. <laughs> Can't buy anything without paying tax. Is there a chance this is in the Hello Jeff box by mistake? No. Flamethrowing dog? No, we don't make those kind of mistakes. <laughs> Sorry. Jim, what would you do with it? I would scare the hell out of Jason's neighbors. I like it. All um, I'm saying, though, actually, I have a condo, so I wouldn't leave it there. I'd leave it in your backyard. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Actually, or your front yard. Yeah. Pond would, would be better for I would use it as punishment for all the fucking dumb people who abuse animals. That's a good one. Okay. I'd yeah. probably use it to burn the uh, car up that is sitting in the spot that Jeff wanted to park in today. Mm-hmm. That had, what was the license plate? Uh, Stylin. Stylin. Oh. Yeah, we, we would... Uh, blow up styling uh, i got behind somebody the other day that their um license plate says jugs xl i didn't even know you could do that but yeah jugs mm-hmm. xl yeah it was like a uh, william hung fan I'm just, why, why does call- everybody keep telling me that <laughs> who is he i just love that i'm like jugs like is this 1975 like i mean hell? it pa- it passed the test and uh Yep. Website. They did not have the balls on the uh, tow hitch, though. I was but kind of surprised that was, by that. Jugs, that's uh, Al Bundy's like favorite magazine. That is that is true. That is true. You know, if he had the tree app, he wouldn't need it. Just put everything in the tree app. Uh, what else we got? Um, from Ryan L. Terry at RL Terry 1. Hey, Terry. Is there a little man that lives in the refrigerator that turns the light off and on? Um, if there is, he needs to be fired because at work we have a freezer that the light's supposed to come on when you open it, and it does not anymore. Ooh. Um, so I, I think he's probably that, that guy's probably as useful as uh, our in, our intern a fax machine. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I mean to be. F- Honest, in this economy, I can't afford anyone else living in my house, so I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Can you afford any more dogs? Uh, I mean, that's, yeah. It's like there's always room for, for Jello. There's always room for another dog. Yeah, it's true. That's true. I mean, yeah, I, I can make that happen. I Mine, just need more space. One of my lights in my fridge just is like a disco ball now because it's like dying. And it's expensive to get back in there and, like, replace it. We had the refrigerator guy out for something else. And he's like, yeah, he's like, it's not even worth it. There's a fuse you have to go into and that. And he's like, I can do it, but it's a pain. I was like, I really don't care. But, yeah, so we have, like, a disco light it sometimes when you open up the fridge at night. It's kind of nice. Kind of wakes you up. Gets you going. So, Jeff, you got anybody in your fridge? I just tried this lychee gummy. Oh. Oh. I snuck ahead. Okay. Because I wanted mm-hmm. to. And? It's a good gummy. Okay. It's fruit flavor, flavorful. Okay. I don't think I've ever had lychee before, so it's a little... What is lychee? It's a, a fruit. Fruit. Is it? From Asia. L-Y-C-H-E-E. Huh. And it... You didn't answer our question. What was the question? Is, is there, there a man, in, man in your refrigerator that turns the light off? Uh, there's no man in my refrigerator. Okay. Woman? Nope, uh, my my refrigerator is living, being free. Gotcha. Guy Gardner's girlfriend. Uh, it was uh, Kyle Rayner. Kyle Rayner's. That's right. Damn it. So, so I, so Brian, did you have the strawberry one? I did. Uh, I did take the strawberry. Okay. And did you like it? I'm chewing it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, le- the lychee's kind of a peach pineapple type. That's not bad at all. I like that. <laughs> okay. Looks like an unopened condom, or like an amoeba. <laughs> I was seeing a silicon breast for like uh, a Barbie. Barbie. A Barbie. <laughs> it might be a little big for Barbie, but God depends. <laughs> Maybe for He Man. Not for if He Man. Driving Jugs XL. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else we got? 
Uh, from Randall Holt at RJ Holt 666. He is not evil. He's just handled that way. And my brother. He says, have you guys watched the documentary Who Done It? It's a documentary based on Clue the movie, failed at the box office, but become a beloved comedy of the 80s. It's really well done. I did watch this. I watched it this weekend. Did you like it? I did enjoy it. Yeah. Didn't we talk about this? We did talk about off this air. last week. Off air. Oh, oh off right. air. Yeah. Excuse me, I had a little burp. There you go. But uh, I really uh, I enjoyed it because obviously when they talk about the movie, it's one of my favorite movies, so I can't argue. Mm -hmm. The And I mean, it's just a guy who was doing this on his own, so I can't mm. get too bent out of shape, but the quality of the film filming was not great. I agree with you. And I get it that the guy's doing it on his own. Yeah. And and he did it just for the love of Clue. And I could be wrong, but I think it's something that somebody could have easily fixed if they knew mm -hmm. what – because, I mean, the it's like they're trying to mix an HD signal on a, an SD feed type okay. thing is what I get watching it. And it was really hurting my eyes. I have no idea on any tech usually, but it, it bothered me too. Like I was like, "Ugh!" It kind of looked cheap, and I know it wasn't, but because the guy did it for a love of it, yeah, it's a good. It, what I enjoyed about the documentary is that it had like you know they had the uh, actors there. Michael McKean is funny. Uh, Scarlett, um, Leslie Ann Warren. Yeah. I like the one guy was talking about how Carrie Fisher was supposed to be uh, Miss Scarlet until well, some powder came into her. <laughs> yeah. way. What I didn't realize, like I, I, I knew the, the Carrie Fisher was supposed mm -hmm. to be Miss Scarlet uh, thing. I didn't realize that Leslie Ann Warren was going to play Mrs. White originally. Yes. And yeah. then when Carrie Fisher was removed Out. from the project... Leslie Ann Warren moved over to Miss Scarlet and they brought in Madeline Kahn to play Mrs. White. I think she was does a better job as Miss Scarlet than she would have as Miss White. Well, I mean it would have been Yeah. Bit been a different part. And Correct. Yeah, you're right. I think uh they went the right way with that. It's enjoyable though. It's on uh Amazon, I think. Um Amazon Prime. So Yes, it is on Prime. Yeah. Go check it out. Uh I, I like I said, I enjoy it just for the stories in that. Um, the one thing I didn't like is the main documentary guy. Stop driving. I don't need you in a car <laughs> yeah, talking. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I guess you're going for the effect of, oh, yeah, yeah I'm driving through L.A. or whatnot. But, I mean, the, the, if you watched it all the way through the end, yes. he runs a red light. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the, yes. He's like, oh, I just ran a red light. Y you probably shouldn't be uh, recording and driving <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Uh, I did like that he uh, was able to take a look at the uh, background of the house and that, like how they drew it and the yeah. artist. I did like the artist. So, do you anything? Do you remember anything about it? No, no. Uh, anything that, for your inspiration? No. Yeah, so do you have? Uh, you asked him if they had any of the, the matches. Like, we don't know. <laughs> but then months later, they w went through and found stuff right. they were going to sell and offered As, me first dibs. I thought that was pretty so, funny, but, though. Hey, if anything, you got. The Clue Mansion yeah, you, drawn. You, you got the, uh, I forgot what they call them, the, the, back. the overlays or what yeah. they used for the the mansion. So that's cool. Yeah, it was good. If you're a fan of the Clue, the movie, it's, it's a fun watch. Wasn't Ryan Reynolds supposed to remake that? When's that at? Yeah, I don't know where it's at. It was it Ryan Reynolds and uh, Jason Bateman, I think, were oh, supposedly think right. attached to it. They, those two could do it well. I think those two could. But I think Ryan Reynolds is too busy running a soccer team. That's true. Season three. He's yeah. too busy being mad at The Rock. Welcome to The Rock. No. Oh, sorry. I'm going in for the mango. Okay. It was pretty tasty. The one that I just had was pretty good, too. That was the lychee. Yeah. At first, yeah. That was good. Uh, Brian, what else you got? I was going to bring up the, uh, you talked about Ronald Reynolds and the preview for uh, Dead Man, uh, Deadpool 3. Oh, yes. <laughs> the the Lee Field uh Feet. Store, feet, just feet, just feet store. Oh my gosh! Oh my. <laughs> so I couldn't pause it just right in the thing uh -huh. in the trailer um, because I saw I saw it, the Layfield whatever Layfield and I saw feet and I couldn't see what else it was and I was like, oh my god, did they just make a joke? Because the joke is that he can't draw feet. Yeah, he's creator of Deadpool. And Not he, a joke. He can't. He, can't. Draw he, draw, he prefers not to, so he tries to draw cuts it off, rocks in front of it, lots of rocks in front of feet. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, or they're just like trapezoids. <laughs> I and, guess. Again, and he made the joke in the original movie too. Yeah. yeah. Um, pockets. I was waiting for pockets. Though. Lots of pockets. He loves pockets. Uh, was he the pocket guy? Yeah, he was also the pocket guy too. Because uh, he had cable a lot. Yeah. So, but, I mean, well, I cable like, just liked cargo pants. Maybe that's <laughs> and cargo shirts, cargo shirts, and um, some bandoliers with extra pockets and stuff. There's on so it. so many bandoliers, so many. Uh, Wolverine, Deadpool, whatever it's called, it looks really good. It looks enjoyable. I think it looks like a fun movie. Yeah, uh, I like it. So, uh, if you pause it just right, you can actually. I guess the one woman, the villain, is coming out of the ship. And somebody paused it, and you can see Professor X's um, uh, wheelchair behind her. And they're like, hmm, is this how they introduce X-Men to the MCU? Or yes. I'm guessing that's a yes. <laughs> I, I think that was pretty much. Or is it Patrick Stewart's X-Men? So Either way, that, this is how the X-Men will be introduced yeah. to the MCU. Yeah. So supposedly uh, Thomas Jane's Punisher is in this one. Ooh. That would be fun. That would be fun. Uh, God's going to sit this one out. Yeah, <laughs> sure is. Hey, <laughs> Castle, may God be with you. <laughs> God's going to sit this one out. God's sitting this one out. It's a, it's a fun movie. That is a good movie. It Again, it's not good cinema, but I no. enjoyed every second of that Punisher film. Yes, yes. Even uh, the bad acting from Even, yeah, Travolta. from Travolta's bad acting. Or Kevin Nash's bad acting. <laughs> By grunting. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> didn't, he didn't really act. He just <laughs> got... <laughs> he played his he part. Yep. Yeah. He beat the shit out of him and then died. Yeah, like, and he lost a lo- uh, loser uh, loses his hair match before that role in WWE. So, you killed my son. Ah! Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> the ultra cheesy part when they're driving Travolta through the parking lot that makes the Punisher symbol. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> the god! Flames. How much work did you have to do for that, Thomas J. or Punisher, Frank Castle? Come on. It, it actually just happened to fall in that pattern. It was just a coincidence. So he had to do it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to kill you, but I have to just for this effect. It's on you. Yep. I, I, it's very enjoyable. Yes. Number three, Strawberry. Okay. I think Strawberry is my least favorite of the... Uh, kas- uh, guy. uh... Fruit uh, gummies. I like that. Uh, what you got, Brian? Uh, wrapping it up with Professor Number One at Doctor Number One. He says, last week's episode was good, except for the second half of the show. Not sure what changed. Do you guys have any thoughts? Blake uh, talked a lot less. Jason showed up. Oh, yeah, that happened, too. Somebody, I don't, somebody on internet. On I, I don't Twitter, think this guy likes you. Somebody on Twitter said actually responded to this and said i listened to it and i didn't think there was any issue with the second half <laughs> i was like thanks <laughs> appreciate it <laughs> well if that was you listener uh, you, you're just wrong because the second half was probably horrible i didn't listen because i was not you can read the transcript though yeah, i can read the transcript but um yeah thanks thanks Professor number one doesn't like me. No one does. It's fine. Well, uh, it would be great to not be liked by Professor number that's one. That's true. He is outside the window. Well, no, no. We had him removed. Oh, that's right. That's right. We had him removed from the neighbor, from the gated community. Earl is great job. Great job by Earl. Uh, we did have something that uh, was sent. It's on. Uh, it's not from us. Our podcast is from the Bracket Podcast. Um, and I thought this was interesting. So they did a uh, sixteen. Uh, episode, 16 shows, 16 sitcoms, and they rank them like in a tournament mm-hmm. style. And so I just kind of want to go through this with you guys, okay? And give, get your thoughts. Yeah, the rankings were all fucked up. Seinfeld's one. I don't have an issue with that. 16 is Married with Children. Scrubs is eight. Parks and Rec is nine. Eight and nine, two of the best, right out of the gate. But, no, I, I, they're okay being eight and nine. No, but it's like, I hate when, like, ones that I would probably have in the final four are going against each other. Oh, you mean fighting? Oh, all away. four of those. Like, Married with Children is just... Oh, I what? don't think I'd have either Seinfeld or Married with Children in my final four. Uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm's four. That 70s show is 13th. That 70s show? Yeah, I can see that being... Oh, 13th. sorry. I was thinking that 80s show. My no. bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Big like, difference. My bad. <laughs> sorry. What about that 90s show? <laughs> what about The Ranch? 
Uh, Friends is number five. Friends is uh, (laughs) Friends is number five. Arrested Development's twelve. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is number two. That's I think that's too high. I I, kind of agree. I I think I I I, I enjoy it. Yes, and I think it's fantastic. But I don't think it's number two. It has a very dedicated following, and the people who follow it are passionate about it. So same thing it was about uh, Arrested Development. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, yeah, like, you know, Friends. There's everybody watches Friends, but there's not a whole lot of people that are like, oh my god, Friends is so great. But there are. Uh, I know a lot more people that are like, oh, always sunny in Philadelphia is so great. But but Friends was water cooler material. It was at the time. Everybody when it was on on Thursday nights on Friday, everybody talked about it. Uh, yeah, you ask anybody what rum ham is, very few people know what you're talking about. <laughs> unfortunately, what hurts isn't it like milk steak? That's pretty close. Cool. Oh. <laughs> what what hurts always sunny was you mm-hmm. never knew. What night it was supposed to be on, or when the seasons were going to run? Yeah, when the new episodes come out, or even yeah. what channel it was going to be on. It's on my DVR, and I'm like, "Oh, you have eight new episodes." I'm like, "What? What happened?" Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what hurts that show is because it's just so inconsistent on whether the seasons are twenty episodes or three. Yeah, <laughs> Cheers is fifteen. That's, that's low, low, too, way too low. Uh, this one I thought was a little high. The first that was put together by someone who didn't. Who never watched who Cheers? Didn't grow up with Cheers uh, in first run. Uh, the Fresh Prince is number seven. That's high. I Way think that's high. a little high. Yeah, Cheers is three times better than the Fresh Prince. Yeah, Community and, is ten. Community uh, should be one, but uh, the Office is three. I don't have an issue with that number. No, Malcolm in the Middle, which I thought was interesting, was fourteen. Yeah. It's about. I like Malcolm in the Middle, but it's not going to. I think it's a middle middle of the road pack. I think it's. It should be on the list of the top 16. Uh, Veep is six. That had a loyal following, but again, doesn't get credit for being on uh, and, Showtime. Yeah. And it was, on, it was on HBO. But or it, HBO, it was HBO. like, what, five seasons maybe? It was five seasons, and yeah. it was like... Yeah. yeah but, with HBO, you never know when the season is going to start. And by the time the new season starts, you forgot about the first season. <laughs> but, it, but it was really funny. It, uh, it, that is a great one to go back and binge. Mm-hmm. Uh, Veep, and then you got 30 Rock is uh, number 11. Mm, I, I think that's a little high. 30 Rock for 30 Rock. I had a hard time getting into. Yeah. yeah it was weird. I a lot of I really dislike Jack McBrayer and the Kenneth character, and I just have a hard time watching that show when he's on it, and it's every episode. Did Baldwin kill anyone on that show? Not that I'm aware. Allegedly. Okay. So... Off the off, looking at this, I'm going to say top four is Seinfeld, Always Sunny in Philly, Office, and Curb Your Enthusiasm. I agree with Jim. I think Sunny is should be on there. I, don't, I think it's way too high. It's, I think Curb Your Enthusiasm is a little high too because yeah. it may be funny, but I don't know if I don't know if it's a top four of all time. Well, the issue I have with having Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm both that high, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. It's yeah. almost the same show. Yeah, it, correct. It, well, it, it's this person's particular sense of humor who seeded these. Yeah. Yes. Obviously likes both of them mm-hmm. very much. There's five people that seeded them. one thing in common between those two shows. Larry David. There we go. <laughs> but uh, I think they put Veep in there a little bit higher than you guys are mm-hmm. thinking. Mm-hmm. But uh, these are Seinfeld, you know, yep. Julie Louis-Dreyfus mm-hmm. and that. But the Always Sunny, I think, because there's some people who might be offended by that. Mm-hmm. Because they're... Not, yeah, if you don't know, the sh- if you're not familiar with the show, you haven't seen from the beginning, yes, I could see how in, like, the last four to five years, if you just watched it. I mean, you had the people who, like, the new generations who are re-watching Friends... Who come out and say that these are horrible people, right? And that, 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 that like, talking about fat shaming and everything like that. Always Sunny has an episode where they're just getting high schoolers shit faced. Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> yep, it's I mean, a great episode. Though <laughs> there are so yeah, there are so many. I, I love the show, but I just yeah. think it's for a general audience, it's low high. Why are we the, so crowded? <laughs> the difference is these are terrible people in Philly. You're kind of supposed to 
root for or, or like the people in Friends. But everybody hates Ross. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Ross, Ross has all the pants on. Ross is a terrible character. So let oh, me so, give so you. So who's worse, Ross or Ted Mosby? Oh, Ross. Fuck 100%. Ted Mosby. Oh, I think Ted Mosby, to be honest. But, I, I would be friends with Ted Mosby. I would punch Ross in the face. www.fucktedmosby.com. <laughs> Probably the greatest website ever invented. <laughs> so let me give you some. What about Zach Morris? Zach Morris is trash. <laughs> So let me, let me I, give you some shows. I'd take him over Ted Mosby. <laughs> let me give you some shows that didn't make it. Just give you guys some ideas. Will and Grace, Modern Family. Uh, put that in, okay, in, I'm in, just giving you some. Uh, um, top 16. Jefferson's. No. Uh, let's see here. The Larry Sanders Show. I don't know if that's a sitcom, though. It is. You think? Yeah. Okay. N- Night Court. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Night Court. Mm, Brooklyn Nine-Nine would have been one that I would have had in mind. Roseanne. Golden Girls. Uh, I know it's controversial, but Cosby Show mm-hmm. at the time, the Cosby Show's number one comedy. No, well, there's nothing wrong with the Cosby Show other than the correct. actions of the person who mm-hmm. you know starred and created the show. Yeah, or terrible, but the show in and of itself isn't bad. Happy right. Days. Uh, everyone loves Raymond. No, uh, fuck you. What? That's. I hate that show. Oh, it's so bad. Home Improvement. Um, but if it wasn't for Everyone Loves Raymond, we wouldn't have had a King of Queens. King of Queens. I understand that. All in the Family. Uh, so I was just so, trying. I was just throwing some out there. Uh, th- this is Are obviously those... made from a millennial perspective. I was just about to say all, most of all of those shows are shows uh, that were probably on. Cheers was the oldest. One. Yeah. Yes. So which one? What would be your top four then? Uh, from that list or of all time? Go for that list. Let's try this list. That list, I would... And, and do we have to, like, put put them down or just the top four? Just the top four to... in general. Yeah. Cool. Well, you obviously know uh, I'm a fan of community. Yeah. I, uh, I'm a fan of parks and recreation. Mm-hmm. I might throw Veep in there. Okay. And Scrubs. Okay. Unless there's something I'm... Forgetting. Those are pretty much, I figure, what you would pick. Not Veep. I, did, I was kind of surprised by Veep. Uh, Brian or Jim? I can go. I will... Uh, Seinfeld's in that, on there for me. It is? Yes. Okay. Um, I would probably go with Married with Children. Okay. I just... Uh, it, again, because it did stuff that nothing else was doing at the time. It should have been higher than uh, Fresh Prince. And then Roseanne came and followed up with what... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But a lot of people saw Roseanne first because not everybody got Fox back at that time. Yeah. Fox viewing <laughs> positions. <laughs> uh, then I'd have Cheers. Okay. And the fourth in that would be... Office? Maybe The Office. About uh, Friends? It's And maybe Always Sunny. I, just, I, just, I was arguing uh, for a general audience, Always yeah. Sunny is... Isn't shouldn't be that high, but for people who don't get offended by anything at all, mm-hmm. it's a fantastic show. It is. Brian, you got anything? Uh, Seinfeld, Office. Mm-hmm. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, well, you would have Scrubs on your list. Scrubs and Cheers. No. Um, probably. Friends? No, I mean, yeah. It, curb? Definitely <laughs> not curb. Parker Lewis can't lose. Oh. The Brady Bunch? No. Mr. Get, Belvedere? There oh. you go. <laughs> That's not an option, but okay. No. Um, so, Seinfeld Office, uh, Scrubs, and mm-hmm. we'll say. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good, good podcasting. This is good podcasting. Um, we'll go with um, somebody show, Sunny, Sunny, okay. uh, yeah, Curb, not Curb. Uh, yeah, Sunny would probably be the fourth out of what we what we have. I would agree with you. I think the only one that I would take out is Scrub is Scrubs. I mean, I think Cheers could be up there as number four. I'm not a huge fan of it. I mean, I enjoy it, but Friends just for the. Like you said, the water cooler moment, I wouldn't have an argument if that's number four. Um, 
No, it's, it's not I my mean, favorite, but I can see, I could understand that it could be in the top four. But you're going your four. Why would you? Yeah. It's not my favorite. Why would it be on your four? I mean, I still enjoy it. I'm just kind of looking at all of them. Like, I'd have Arrested Development up there higher than some people do. Oh, I forgot Arrested yeah. Development was on that list. I mean, I think I would do Seinfeld, mm. Sunny, Office. I mean, probably Cheers. I think I do. I do like Cheers a lot. Um, I was just, like I said, just kind of something interesting to look at. Uh, that's on the bracket. It's a podcast. Um, on shows that aren't on there, what would you put up there? Ooh, that's a good one. I know that I don't know if they're considered. Oh, yeah. Like, would Psych be considered a? Mm, is that more I, of a dramedy? Yeah, it was. It's an hour like, long. Yeah. It wasn't a f- sitcom. Or Chuck. I, mean, I would I, put Brooklyn Nine Nine. Brooklyn Nine Nine was. I funny. would probably put that up what there. The, I, I would put How I Met Your Mother on there. Okay. I mean, I would put How I How You How I Met Your Mother ahead of Friends. My name is Earl. Oh yes. <laughs> I raising I, hope. Um, raising hope is good. I think I like My Name Is Earl better. Randy Hickey Randy is Hickey's all time such, great. Could character. you put Simpsons or anything like that on there? Simpsons. I mean, I consider like Simpsons, Family Guy, South Park, and like Futurama are their own. Okay. Okay. And with Bob's Burgers, live behind them, and mm-hmm. um, let's see, I'm and King of the Hill. Oh, yeah, American Dad. King of the Hill is probably fifth. American. I forgot about American Dad. Mm-hmm. Um, I would obviously uh, would have King of Queens on there. <laughs> uh, I mean, Kevin can Kevin wait. Can wait. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. It's the but one where like, he was doing the race cars. Oh, uh, the something. Yeah. Right? It was on Netflix, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I would probably I would probably add Shits Creek okay. to that. Um by personal mm-hmm. list. Um and probably Because that was as hot crap. as as anything was for about two years. Oh, it was. And now that you mentioned that made me think Ted I, Lasso. Ted Lasso. Ted oh Lasso yeah, number one for me. Yeah, I've, I've rewatched that show like four times. Same. Uh, I Just the message it has of of yeah. being upbeat mm-hmm. and even dealing with uh, mental health issues. Mm-hmm. It still brightened your day watching every episode. Whistle, whistle, <laughs> whistle. Uh, I forgot. This is one that I completely forgot about. News radio. I would put that on my that list. Would definitely be on your list. Yeah, I love news sports radio. night. Sports night. Sports, sports night. night. Can't give yourself a nickname. I wanted <laughs> we, to be called the Hammer. You know why I couldn't? Because you can't give yourself a. Nickname. That's right. Yes, you. you I, I know sports night and news radio. Yeah, are number one and two in your book. Hey, cut man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> what, what was that? Brooklyn and something else is the 50, 49th ninth state. Oh. I forget what in city he said. Fifty two state. Yeah, but he you forgot <laughs> Brooklyn and some, nope. <laughs> well, um, as God is my witness, I thought Turkey could w- fly. Yeah, that, that, that had a small run. And it's kind of uh, yeah. Niche. I mean, th- three seasons. It got just enough to make it to syndication. Actually, a couple episodes less than you that than the hundred. I think it was in the nineties, mm-hmm. but but it it was enough that they put it in syndication, and so it stayed around a lot longer than it would have. Rolling Stone had uh, Shit's Creek as uh, on the hundred best mm-hmm. sitcoms was number one hundred. Uh, would well, would Freaks and Geeks be considered a comedy? I I similar as talk with. I, uh, Chuck and no, I would think Psych. Chuck and Psych are more comedies than Psych. Yeah, probably that and uh, Undeclared. Undeclared, yeah. But those are also like one, one and Duns, yeah, two and Duns for no, yeah, each were one, each were one season, yeah, one. So I mean, that would I think be Undeclared really hard. was more of a comedy. Yeah, I think they tried to make that more of a straight comedy <laughs> than uh, Rolling Stone had Cheers number two and The Simpsons number one. Well, I mean, that's Seinfeld's just... number three. I love Lucy's number four, uh, and All in the Family stop is number five. Uh, where, where did Rolling Stone have the many loves of Dobie Gillis? Eighteen, okay, hundred. Oh. <laughs> uh, do, did, do we have a moment of silence for Larry Dalrymple? Oh, uh, Larry was the barfly on The Simpsons. Yep, who was much who thought. Homer and Barney and those guys and Mo 
they were he was much better friends to them than than they were to him. Yes. Yes. What about Mash? That was number six on the list for Rolling Stones. I don't know that that's. I, I it mean, was a I, comedy that became a drama. Right. Yeah. That's I, another one of like I just yeah. saw that on a list that I was just scrolling through looking. It's through. great. I don't know if I think of it as a comedy. Yeah. Same. That's. So. It was a fantastic show. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I just. I, well, one because back at the day that it was on, it was pretty much comedies half hour. Dramas, Dramas an hour. hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a half hour, and they played it for laughs, but then they tackled some serious subject. Yeah. Um, Jeff, can you give me some news of the geek music here? I do like that conversation, though. We should do our own bracket for sitcoms. It's going to be a tough one. We could all agree on, though. Well, I, how about we all put four in? Or we all put sixteen in. I mean, we can put. Oh, uh, we all do our own. We can do sixty-four. Or we, I, I, we yeah. get a list well, of all these. Things and, will start overlapping. I know. I mean, but we'll get a bunch that we can add yeah. to it. And, and kind of have the fans vote. Yep, that could be interesting. Okay, we'll work on that. Yep. Go ahead. It's time for another installment of the news of the geek. Per comicbookmovie.com, where Jeff gets all of his news from. All of it. News came out uh, two weeks ago that the Fantastic Four will introduce a female take on the Silver Surfer, played by Ozark breakout Julia Garner. She was great in Ozark. This is exciting for me. Uh, She's a fantastic actress. Deadline's Justin Kroll took to Twitter shortly after the Surfer news broke to confirm that Galactus will indeed be the main villain, but no actor is currently in talks for the part. The top choice for Galactus was Javier Bardem, but it was noted that scheduling conflicts may prevent him from signing on. Antonio Banderas was also a rumored contender. Doctor Doom is expected to appear, but only briefly, in a post credit scene to set up a bigger threat down the line. So they think Galactus is a Spaniard? I guess so. I, I think Galactus is just a hard character to... Oh, very much so. To put on yeah. film. Well, like the... Last film they put him in, he was a cloud. Uh, <laughs> well, again, it's, cause it's it's a being that eats planets. Jeff. <laughs> oh, my God. They're going to show Galactus. This is going to be awesome. Oh, my God. Silver Surfer is scaring everybody. Is that a cloud? <laughs> Looks like a cumulus cloud. <laughs> Wait a minute. But honestly, I think the cloud is more scary than the drawn character from the comic books. The, the, ca- the comic book character oh, yeah. does look goofy. Yeah. Yeah, and he just... Stay. I was thinking, like when they when they say he eats planets, like he's like big enough to like chew a planet. <laughs> but it's like, oh no, he's got this machine that just sucks the yes. life energy from the planet and pumps it into him. Yeah, I'm it like, becomes a smoothie. It's a smoothie <laughs> machine, basically, is what he has. He's just got a big cosmic blender. That's right. <laughs> Give me some strawberries. Pour some milk into there. <laughs> Pour some. Oh, sorry. Anyways, um. Let's see here. Uh, there have been rumors that both Sicilian Murphy from Killian, Oppen- Killian, whatever, Killian. from Oppenheimer and Mads Mikkelsen from Rogue One are in the mix, but nothing too substantial. I will watch anything Mads Mikkelsen is in. He could be a really good Doctor Doom. He could be good. Ooh, I just saw uh, the- uh, uh, two TVs to Paradise ask the question. You know, is there an actor out there, mm-hmm. or what actor would you like go to see any film that they're in? Mm-hmm. And now Jim said Mads Mickelson and like that, I went, oh, yeah, man, he's... That's a good one. He's somebody who I would definitely at least consider mm-hmm. going because he's in it. But it's, unfortunately, again, he when his eye leaks stuff, it, <laughs> it's his tell. <laughs> it's his tell. <laughs> uh, as for the children of Reed and Sue Richards, Daniel Rickman, insider, has heard that both Franklin and Valeria... Valeria? Valeria. Valeria. <laughs> Valeria. It says Valeria on the paper. It does. Or Valeria. Valeria. <laughs> Sounds like a disease. <laughs> we'll appear. You're a disease. Thank you. We don't have any de- details on their ages, so they and may I'm be babies or toddlers. Uh, Rickman also reports that Fantastic Four are well-established and big celebrities in the movies when it starts. Hey, it's 929. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, Jason, one of your kids is out in the other room. Yes, found one. Plot details are still a mystery, but rumors have claimed that the Fantastic Four will be set in an alternate universe. Uh, obviously suggests that the characters will be variants for some other part of the multiverse that will eventually find their way to the main MCU. <sighs> it doesn't need to be interconnected. You can make separate movies. 
Yeah, but they're going to connect them all. They have to. No, Why? you don't. Because the multiverse is dying. They're going to combine it all into one timeline. Which is stupid. Then then you're going to kill all your projects. Yeah. They basically are going to streamline everything. That's how they're going to get Miles Morales into the main MCU. That's how they're going to get their... Just, personally, I... Wor- I, I don't mean, care. Just bring him in. You don't even have to explain it. Oh, yeah, this is Spider-Man now. <laughs> I don't give yeah. a shit. No, it's like, yeah, there's, they're here. The Fantastic Four are here. Do we need they? Yeah, to explain they, them? They are spending way too much money for... They're trying too hard. Man, and nobody gives nobody a shit. Nobody cares. That's it. No. no one. Well, well th- there's a small, like, probably loud. vocal uh, yeah. group. Internet. Oh, yeah, no, that's groups. right. I'm sorry. You, you can't just bring someone in and say, oh, yeah, here they are. Because when they did that to the ex- Eternals, everyone complained, why weren't they fighting Thanos? Where were they when this big threat was going Maybe on? Maybe they're on vacation. Fuck off. They're not supposed to. <laughs> that's not their job. <laughs> right. Why isn't the Beyonder involved? <laughs> Their watcher. Why isn't he involved? Because he watches. I personally would have loved to have seen the Punisher fight Thanos. <laughs> I don't know why he wasn't there. Bam! I went for the head. It's yeah. over. Have right. a good day. I, why didn't Batman fight Thanos? <laughs> Where's Dark Side? Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> we never got a real good Dark Side in MCU. That's, That's what I would call Thanos. a crossover. Yes. <laughs> That's a crossover. Ooh. That's the amalgam universe. We can't do it. We can't do it. I mean, Spawn did I, nothing to fight Thanos. <laughs> Where was he? I know. He should have a picket sign outside the next Marvel movie. <laughs> Where was Spawn? I, that's what I mean. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I, I like mean, the Blood Man and Chronic didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> this asshole. Lone Ranger? Oh, Where was yeah. he? Blank Man? Blank. <laughs> Where's Blank Man when you need him? Meteor Man? Or what was that? Metroid Man? Or who was... Uh, Meteor Man. Bad Meteor yeah. Man. <laughs> there it is. Uh, or the Mystery Men. Or yeah. The yeah. Bowler. The Bowler was not there. The <laughs> fucking Bowler. Or either the Weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage? <laughs> yeah, just shows up with a bow and arrow. <laughs> uh, oh, I mean, that's Hawkeye. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can't have He was there. Yeah, I was thinking right. the Weatherman the movie with Nicholas Cage. That's what I was Well, saying. Thanos, yeah. I appreciate you coming, but it's going to be rainy tomorrow. Could you hold <laughs> off on your attack? Kick ass? <laughs> Not there. I really thought Legolas could have done a lot against him. <laughs> could you imagine just all of them in there? <laughs> I mean, I think Pat Oswalt did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, Luke Skywalker could have stopped it. Ah, now you're getting uh, a little I too weak. Luke is dead. I mean, that happened a long time ago when he was alive. Okay. Luke Skywalker's Force Ghost. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> could have come back and told you how be to honest, beat him. He's been staring at me in the shower. It's a little creepy. That Force Ghost. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Would you like to see the Force? No, go away, Luke. I'm not interested. <laughs> kind of being creepy, man. <laughs> Can I have, take a shower in peace? Yeah. Uh, you know I, what? I'm not I, sure why you went there. <laughs> 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 My thing is, though, like, I like the multiverse because, like you said, it opens up stories. Like, I, it, it opens up stories, place. but it doesn't, you, you don't, they all don't need to interconnect. Not everything needs to be. Hey, what happened? Oh, it's, it's a separate story. It worked for DCU. <laughs> yeah. I, but I feel like the, like, the, the, like, them trying to seam it from theater to streaming, mm-hmm. like, I feel like they have to, they feel like they have to connect it. Yes. To keep people. Invested. Do you know what were some fantastic movies that weren't t- the Batman the yeah dark, uh, from DC yeah uh, that was in the Elseworlds the Joker <laughs> no I'm just talking about I the, mean those are the movies that are good from the DC the, universe. the Christian Bale Batman yeah Dark Knight trilogy Dark Knight trilogy oh yeah yep yeah standalone from those were fantastic else. there's yep. no reason you don't you don't have to bring Gal Gadot the, into it yeah. <laughs> Um, but again, I don't mind making a Justice League where you have somebody else playing Batman. That's fine. Yeah. My my thing is, though, it's going to be funny when Marvel goes to all this effort, like the Secret Wars movie, all the movies that they make, and they're like, okay, we have one straight, one timeline now, and then the next year, Sony will be like, see Spider-Man 5 in his own world, <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be like, fuck you, MCU. It's and like, everyone's going to be pissed about it. Correct. The problem is, there's already uh, kind of a hangover for mm-hmm. uh, superhero movies. Where you don't, they don't have to be tied together. I just want to go watch a movie. Yeah, and I, to be perfectly fair, that's partially why I've stopped watching Marvel stuff because you don't. You're 27 things behind, <laughs> right? Like I, like this I, week. Yeah, yeah. It's like 
I actually enjoyed the Marvels. I think you would like the the movie because it really doesn't connect except for the last five minutes of the uh, film. You can watch the Marvels movie, but uh, you can't. I, I was so bad because it was women women oh, led. Oh, can't no. do it. Where's women involved? It was it was a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's so like can't make Captain America black. How dare you? He was never black in the comics. Except when he was. Except when he was. <laughs> uh, yes, he was. <laughs> and it was designed by white men in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Of course they're going to pick, you know, that's what they do. It's okay. You can change with the times. I still say that they should kill Bruce Wayne off and make a new character take over. I didn't mind when Nightwing was taken over Jean-Paul Valley. And granted, he was an awful character. But, like, at least it was different. I enjoy those things. So, anyways. Uh, moving on. Per the Daily Beast, where Jim gets all of his news from. Uh, no. A man in New Zealand went looking for his elderly parents last Thursday morning, and after becoming concerned they weren't under the coffee tables, table, he heard them and that he had not heard from them for days, reports say. He went to their rural rented property in Wakataka, West Auckland, and he found a ram in a paddock along the lifeless, alongside the lifeless bodies of his parents. The couple in their early 80s are believed to have been killed by the sheep, according to the New Zealand Herald. Authorities believe the man had gone out to feed the ram and never returned. His wife then suffering the same fate when she went to check on him. (laughs) Stuff uh, reports. It's interesting. Uh, New Zealand police said the bodies were found around 7.30 a.m. local time on Thursday morning. The agency said in a statement that the ram was in a paddock paddock, paddock? Paddock. Uh, when authorities were contacted. Uh, they said another person on the scene had also suffered a minor injury after being attacked by this ram. It's just a dickhead of a ram. <laughs> <laughs> and to be was, fair, that's his job. <laughs> to ram them. It, the, <laughs> his job is in his name. And that when police arrived at the scene, quote, they too were confronted and approached by the ram. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing on my property? <laughs> on undertaking a risk assessment, the ram was shot and died at the scene. <laughs> A scene examination has been ongoing today and now has been completed, the police said. They said authorities are now working to establish the circumstances of what had taken place in the paddock. I think you just figured it out. <laughs> Dean Burrell, the elderly, elderly couple's nephew, told the Herald that the pair were retired and lived at the property for eight years. Quote, unfortunately, they both lost their lives in a tragic accident. They are nice people and didn't deserve this. That ram, though, he was a dick. <laughs> Uh, Pearl described the deceased as hobby farmers who had cheap chickens and some cattle. Quote, everyone's in shock as to what's happened. They're very upset. I feel like I was dreaming. Actually, it was a bit of a shock being told what had happened, and I just didn't believe it. See, unfortunately, these guys may were a little in over their heads running a few of these animals. Yeah. But, yeah, they didn't deserve it. Like the Torons in, uh, <laughs> in the national parks who decide I'm going to pet this buffalo deserve it. What was the one this week that a uh, drunk guy kicked this buffalo's leg? Yeah. I'm like, the, what the fuck? Was that the one that I sent? Yeah. 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 Where the buffalo was like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm sticking up for myself. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> he pulled out a gun and shot the guy. <laughs> I, I, those videos of like, like it was like a goat or something there, and the guy walks up and like smacks it ass and runs away, and the goat kicks and backs and smacks it and runs away and kicks and it gets close, and the goat didn't wait for him to smack it, just kicked him. <laughs> <laughs> I like the one where was it the deer that beat up the hunter that oh. came up to him? <laughs> like that. Ah. Uh, so, anyways, story of the week: don't get rams. That's the lesson of the week. No, you can get a ram. Just know what you're doing. Yeah, don't. I just like they just kept attacking people. He had a bad day that day. I he was he won he won at least two of those bouts. <laughs> <laughs> he chose violence that day. <laughs> he uh, hadn't had his coffee yet, <laughs> so don't talk to him. Uh, Harvard news because that's what we're doing now. Somehow, <laughs> per Insider Higher Education, where Brian gets all of his news from. A former coach of fencing at Harvard University, Peter Brand, was cleared last month of charges that he took a bribe from the wealthy father of two students to have them admit it. Brand was charged under federal law with accepting bribes to get the two sons of Jack Zhao admitted to the university. Zhao, who was charged with making the bribes, was also acquitted. Justice, Justice Department statement in 2020 at the time of Brand and Zhao's arrest said, quote, in total, Zhao made $1.5 million in payments to Brand or for Brand's personal benefit, even as Brand recruited Zhao's younger son to the Harvard fencing team and asked, after also having recruited Zhao's older son. 
Zhao allegedly paid for Brand's car, made college tuition payments for Brad's uh, Brand's older son, paid the mortgage on his residence, and later purchased the residence for well above its market value, thus allowing Brand to uh, purchase a more expensive residence in Cambridge that Zhao then paid to renovate. <laughs> hey, he's just being a good friend. Uh, Zhao's younger son. He didn't expect to get any... Uh, anything out of this. He was just being a good friend buying all this stuff for him. I like the whole thing is that Brand just didn't disclose the payments to Harvard when recruiting his son. Yeah, I forgot to recruit and tell that. Harvard fired Brand as a coach for violating the university's conflict of interest regulations, but those regulations did not necessarily make what happened illegal. So lawyer for Brand told the jury, he says, it may feel wrong, but it's not a crime. <laughs> may not feel great. Stories were first reported by the Boston Globe in 2019. Uh- I'm just going to go ahead and say rich person pays to get children into college. <laughs> that, News that's that all I read from that. Well, Felicity Huffman served jail time. I like this yeah, one. If if this person were a celebrity, they would be fucking canceled. I just I like... like don't, p- rich people donate money to universities <laughs> all the time. Which is the dumbest thing with the Felicity Huffman thing. Just build a wing of the library. Exactly. No, that's it, all you had to do. But the issue was well, is that, that but, they, they got them... They 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 falsified stuff to say that they were yes. uh, uh, volleyball Ro- players, rowers, or, yeah, rowers, rowers, yeah, rowers. Yeah. I don't know if these guys were actually fencers. Then yeah, okay. Yeah, I, Shortly I after the money. scandal broke, Harvard uh, provided conflict of interest training <laughs> for its coaches. I mean, Harvard doesn't can't give like scholarships, uh, athletic scholarships anyway. No, so but, I mean, I. <laughs> Okay. Brand's so, wife. Okay. Oh, so did is this is this Zhao? Is this the same guy who convinced his buddy to uh, <laughs> uh put his, his feet in off. dry ice? <laughs> what? <laughs> I missed something here. Yeah, you weren't on that episode. Oh, Apparently okay. you didn't listen. It was what was Zhao and Lyle's day, day of fun. fun. Oh, is that <laughs> uh Brand's wife testified the funds were really loans, not gifts. She said Zhao was a kind man who wanted to help the family. Exactly. She admitted, however, that the couple never declared the loans as an obligation and a mortgage application. Quote, in retrospect, probably should have been listed. The cover-up is always worse than the crime. Yep. A lead prosecution witness was Joshua Miller, a reporter for The Globe, who was subpoenaed to testify. He told jurors that quotes attributed to Zhao in 2019 article were accurate and that Zhao had acknowledged in an interview that the purchase of Brand's home looked suspicious, but he saw no conflict in buying the home at the time that his older son was on Harvard's fencing team. And his younger son was actively applying to Harvard. Uh, let's see here. He wrote, uh, I re- he said, I recall him telling me the kids were phenomenally excellent in their academics and fencing skills. Uh, I wanted to help Peter Brand because I feel so sorry he has to travel so much to go to fencing practice. <laughs> I feel bad the coach has to travel to go do his job. <laughs> Okay, I'll just buy you a new house. Jeff, I'm, I feel bad that you're five minutes away from your job. I'm going to buy you a house right next door, okay? Let me help you there. It's only three and a half minutes. Okay, it's too far. Too far. Too far. It, yeah, whatever. I don't. I sense there's some weird things going on at Harvard. Just saying. So that is your news of the geek. Jeff, you got some box office uh, bombs and news and world reports and all that stuff. That's the wrong button. Oh. It's time for box office bombs. Bombs. All right. The box office top five report from April 26th, 2024 to April 28th of 2024. Number one at the box office, Challengers. It made $15 million in its opening weekend on a $55 million budget. I don't know what this is about. Um, people who are challenging things. Zendaya is in a threesome. That's all I keep seeing the commercials for. Yeah, with tennis players. Oh, okay. It's the we, I read it last week. I know, but I wasn't paying attention. Oh, weird. Or were you even here? I was here at that point. Oh, okay. Thanks what else? Showing up. Uh, number two, Unsung Hero made $7.7 million in its opening weekend on a budget of $6 million. I think that's a hit. Got its money back. Woo! Coming in at number three, Godzilla X Kong: The New Empire made seven point two million, a total of one hundred eighty-one million, <laughs> on a one hundred thirty-five million dollar budget. Jason's laughing over the discussion from last week. He's making disgusting uh, arm motions and things. Observe. 
he wants to shove his fist up Godzilla's That's butt. That's disgusting. What are you doing? No, it's a puppet. Oh, oh Godzilla's Hello. a puppet. Uh, number four, Civil mm-hmm. War made seven million, a total of fifty-six million, on a budget of fifty million dollars. I don't see what's civil about war, anyways. Thank you, Axel Rose. And Abigail made five point two million, a total of nineteen million, on a budget of twenty-eight million. Mm-hmm. Uh, three, three of the five movies actually already made their uh, money back uh, yeah. this week. Good so. for them. Yep. Nice. So we're doing well. No bombs, really. Civil War's close. Challengers is Civil War is over. It was a fifty million dollars budget. They made fifty six. Oh, oh, you're right. I Challengers might become a bomb. It kind of depends how next week goes. Well, that's true. Fifteen million for fifty five. That's forty. Million. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what's coming up? Upcoming May third of twenty twenty four. We have Tarot. When a group of friends recklessly violates the sacred rule of tarot readings, they unknowingly unleash an unspeakable evil trapped within the cursed cards. <laughs> one by one, they come face to face with the fate and end up in a race against death. It made it even funnier because Brian and I both rolled our eyes and laughed at the same time looking at each other. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can someone tell me what the rules of the tarot cards are? You don't talk the- about them, Jeff. Oh. Don't talk about the rules. We don't talk about tarot. We don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> Who's in this? Uh, a bunch of people. You don't know who they are. Okay. Sounds what like else? A, no, sir. A blockbuster. Olwen Ferrer and Avantika. Oh, oh Avantika. Oh. Yeah. Love Avantika. Her, her music is amazing. <laughs> Avantika. <laughs> oh, my God. What else has come out, Jeff? <laughs> and I don't even know who you're thinking of when you're saying her music is. Uh, are you thinking of like Martika? No, or no, I, I have no idea. I just or... made it up. That she, every time I don't know someone, they're just a musician. Um, <laughs> Martika, I know what, toy soldiers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> toy soldiers marching. What? That's right. Shut it's up. Marching. <laughs> That's right. It's marching. Yeah, you're. No, it's not. It, it's That's... really not. What yeah. else we got? Yeah, you were right. Ten thousand is not enough. No. We've Never. got the fall guy. <laughs> A down and out stuntman must find the missing star of his ex girlfriend's blockbuster film. It says that Ryan Gosling guy and Emily Blunt, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Hannah Waddingham, Teresa Palmer, Stephanie Sue, Winston Duke, Ben Knight. Yeah, this will probably be number one next week. Adam Dunn's in it. I'm not even. From the Reds? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just hits home runs. I saw he. Or strikes out. Strikes out. I don't really have any desire to see this film. I don't think it looks horrible, but I just – it doesn't look great to me. But people are loving – like they are – it is getting some big buzz lately. But that's because it's based Ryan off Gosling. the hit television I like show. the TV show with Lee Majors, but I'm not sure great, about this. Great theme song. Uh, what else we got? We've got Wildcat. Oh, Goldie Hawn? Oh, uh, that's uh – Released in 2023, it follows the life of writer Flannery O'Connor while she's struggling to publish her first novel. Hmm. Mm. Laura, Annette Benning. Laura Linney. Okay. She's good. Philip Ettinger, Raphael Casal, Cooper Hoffman, Christina Dye. Director, Ethan Hawke. Oh. Okay. We also have Dragon Keeper. Dragon Keeper. The fate of ancient China rests on the shoulders of one young girl who must find the last remaining dragon egg and fulfill her destiny. This is a... Uh, is this a Game of Thrones prequel? Is it, this is like Raya and the Last Dragon. It is animated. Oh, okay. I think it is Raya and the Last Dragon. I don't think it's Disney. No, it's not. Okay. What um, else we got? Uh, Thabu and the <laughs> Rhino Case. I'm going that's animated, too. Uh... Come out in 2023. Tabo wants to become a private detective. If only his home, the small African village, was not the most peaceful savannah paradise. But when things take a sudden turn, when a rhino is murdered in the safari park for its horn. So not animated. Not animated. Okay. And I... Jason, you should have to read all these names. (laughs) The the first person playing Tabo, his name, it's spelled L I. T H L H O H O N O L O F A T S O. Lichtenstein. Okay. It ends in Fatso. Okay, Lichtenstein Fatso. And that the last name is L I T H or L I T L H A K A Y A N E. Lithuania. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. Luxembourg, Lithuania. Sounds great. 
Okay. Uh, well, also coming out. What? Yeah, it comes out uh, on the second, not on the third. Okay. Is Jean de Berry? What's that? That it's a, a little movie. It's uh, the life of Jean Becu, who was born as an illegitimate daughter of an unpervious seamstress in 1743, and went on to rise to the court of Louis XIV to become his last official mistress. And that has a little named actor by the name of uh, Johnny Depp in it. Never heard of him. <laughs> uh, My Wayne, Johnny Depp, Amber Heard. No. My favorite uh, uh, part of that is you know they've got official mistresses. Oh, in, in back in the, the old the French days. courts. Well, they did. And if you if you watch Shogun, they had no, official mistresses not. too. <laughs> I didn't think I needed to watch Shogun. I heard Blake talk all about it. So, yeah, that's why I didn't listen. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, he did say Shogun finale was good, but left me wanting a little bit more. That was what Blake's was. Uh, okay, get yeah, Jeff. That, that was the that was the two second wrap up of the thirty minute dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> and the I, to his credit, he I felt like he said everything he wanted to say, and he was looking at all of us, and we were all just like. <laughs> Huh? Oh, are you done? <laughs> what? I like. I, I don't know anything about what you're talking about, man. But it sounds great. You love it. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what that means. I, I watched it. Uh, Jeff, give me some top five music. Top five? Oh, I hit the wrong button there. What is wrong with DJ Fat Fingers today? Uh, he has fat fingers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's in his name. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm not going to ever play you music again if you're going to say Gold Dust after. I didn't say that. Uh, top five this week is favorite. You, you actually did. Favorite. It's on. It's taped. It's on tape. I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, favorite fictional towns. Uh, Brian, you want to go first? I can go first. Go ahead. Uh, I know it. Uh, this technically is a real place, mm-hmm. but um, just I, I don't think that it's portrayed accurately. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say the valley. <laughs> you know, because there's no police there, you solve everything how? Karate. There you go. Find it. Go to your the local dojo on the corner, yep. and that's how you settle everything. Yep. Uh, Jeff, number five? Number five for me, I'm going uh, with The Village mm-hmm. from M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. Okay. Is that just because everyone's away from you? Well, you didn't say I wanted to live oh, in okay. it. I was just asking. I just thought it was a fun fictional town where they paid like the pe- rich government officials to keep the planes from flying overhead. Yes. And they have a shed that thou shall not go. Should we go there? No. Why? You shall not go there. Oh. It's in the name. It has a machine right next to it that says don't turn off. No, that's the island. Oh, that sorry. is not on my list. Sorry. I think we're the only two people that didn't like that movie. <laughs> I don't think anybody liked that movie. Uh, mine is Blue Valley, Nebraska from the TV show Stargirl. I picked it like places I would like to live um, because it's a superhero town, but it's very like nice and uh, quaint little small town outside of, you know, villains coming in and destroying some of it. I thought it was a pretty nice little town, a little fun town. Uh, there you go. Number five? Uh, number five for me. I will go with – it's actually I think a real town, but mm-hmm. it's uh, – in a lot of different stories. Okay. Castle Rock, Maine. Oh. Okay. That that I, that did come up on mine. I thought about that. Uh, number four? Number four. Um, it's a little bit more than a city or a town. It's kind of the new planet of existence. I'm going to go with Bob. Bob from? Oh, planet Bob. Titan AE. Titan AE, yep. I like that planet. And it would be one of the first ones there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going with Cloud City from Empire Strikes that was my number four. You put it on the board. <laughs> Cloud City. Uh, Lando's there. It's a pretty cool town. The Cloud Seems City cl- of Bespin. Yeah, it, it was clean. Um, I, yeah. but, but it was fucking Ugnaughts. Yeah, but you could have... Yeah, but, but they were the s- slave-like people that labored away from you. Yeah. You live up top with the cold views looking out over. Unless you were yeah. part Ugnaught, then you're in trouble. Oh, well, I wouldn't want to live there if I was an Ugnaught. Correct. So... Uh, number four is Cloud City for you. <laughs> number four was Cloud City for me. Four for you. Uh, number four for me, Bikini Bottom. <gasps> oh, oh, I forgot Bikini Bottom. Who lives? Um, 
in a pineapple, pineapple under, under the sea. sea. SpongeBob Square Square Pants. Pants. <laughs> Yeah. Who's yellow and porous absorbent is he? SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, number three. Uh, number three for me, I'm going to go with Hope Washington. What's that from? First Blood. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Why did I think it was in Oregon? Yeah, but you got Brian Dennehy there, too. Huh. That's yeah, a good I mean, he, thing. He was only there for a little while. That's true. <laughs> Uh, number three for you? Number three for me is uh, Quahog, Rhode Island. <laughs> Any town that would have Adam West as their mayor is a great town. That is true. You do have, uh, what is it, uh, Woods uh, Elementary James School. Woods James Elementary Woods Elementary School. Yeah. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece, piece of candy. candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Uh, my number three, uh, stick with me here, Pleasantville from the movie, but after the change. Like when it started becoming, you know, colorized, colorized version. Of yeah, not Pleasant before because that was kind of a little black rough. and white. No, 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 no. That was not good. But the black and white Pleasantville, they won every basketball game. They did. <laughs> I love when they all kept making it. I like that movie. I watch that probably once a year. Really enjoy that film. Well, you know what they say. You can't win them all. <laughs> but we have. <laughs> we have won them all. <laughs> Would you like to pin me? <laughs> Stop it. Do not take him up there. Uh, yeah, Jeff or Jim, I'm sorry. Number three. I'll go with Schmigadoon. What's that? From the show, show Schmigadoon. Oh, is that the musical one? <laughs> yes. Okay. Where everything you have to like do, you have to sing. It was an amusing show. I would not do well. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was what? Keegan-Michael Key and uh, Cecily Strong? Uh, yes. I do like her. Uh, number two? Uh, number two. Oh, I just had it. I, um, it is... Let me pull it up here. Shermer, Illinois. Oh. Breakfast Club. John Hughes. John Hughes. John Hughes. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, there we go. 16 Candles. Yeah. The John so Hughes. Uh, it's a f- fictional Chicago suburb. Yep. We decided to move to Shermer, Illinois because they don't have any good drug dealers there. Then when we got here, we found out there is no Shermer, Illinois. <laughs> uh, number two for me is uh, <laughs> Mystery Alaska. That's half of my number two. Put it on the board! My number two is Sicily, Alaska, and Mystery, Alaska. <laughs> uh, you know where you can get rubber and tug around here? <laughs> is that Michael Myers? Like, what, what, what are you doing with my list? Sorry. There, Jason? Sorry. Uh, I love Mystery, Alaska. Great show. And great Sicily, film. Alaska's from uh, Northern Exposure. Northern Exposure. Exposure. Mm-hmm. Another great show. Yep. They have moose. Uh, number two for you? Uh, number two for me... Is going to be uh, charming California. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're on the right side of the law, you don't have to worry about it. And by law, I mean Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, I mean if you're good friends with uh, the uh, the club, with the sheriff, yeah, or, yeah, or the club. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number one. Uh, number one should be no surprise. Dylan, Texas. <laughs> Full heart. That's not even right. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Since I was saying it, clear minds, clear eyes, clear eyes, full hearts, <laughs> can't lose. So you get so, you get to season three yet, Jason? We have not. We've been struggling. Man, it was so good. So oh, good. It's, it's awesome. We love this show. Then it just is. Fucking we've stop watching some, it. We've had some rough couple weeks here. So uh, number one for you. Number one for me is Pawnee, Indiana. Oh, that was. Whoa, down goes Hayden Christians. No, the, the little ghost dude. in the... Oh. Jake Lloyd. Oh, yeah, that ghost case. in the studio said, fuck you and your Pawnee. We are not doing that. The Pawnee, Indiana is filled with so many fun characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I just want to go to Punchburger. Ooh. Or JJ's. A child-sized uh, <laughs> soda that's as big as a child. Or JJ's, actually. I think what, that would be a good place to go. What's the shop that uh, uh, they opened up? The um, shoot, nah, I can't think of it. The guy that's always on social media in it. Tom. Yeah. The where he sold or rented his yeah rent the, swag. His, yes, the rent swag. <laughs> Treat yourself. Uh, number one for me is to be no surprise. May Mayberry. I love Mayberry. I love Andy Griffith show. <laughs> Mayberry RFD was such a great show. No, it wasn't. Uh, but yeah. The black and white era may vary, not the colorized version. So just the opposite of Pleasantville. 
Uh, number one. So many jokes. Number one for me, I hobied this because it's my right to. Okay. I'll have the one town that you can see from, what was it, Alaska, Maine, oh. Kentucky, and Ohio. What's that? Springfield. Springfield, Springfield. It's a hell of a town. And then I'll also go to Colorado and go South, South Park, Park, Colorado. Ah, uh, that's a good one. I, I considered those. I decided to go Quahog because yeah. Adam West was the mayor. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. We and I also had a, a new New York as a uh, yes from uh, Futurama. Uh, Sean Coon from Pittsburgh Nerd had Cloud City, Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Twin Peaks scares me. Sunnydale from Buffy. That scares me too. Gotham City. That's a terrible place to live. Only if you're not a co- uh, don't just don't be a cop there. No, oh, I think everybody, everybody is you're criminal. Yeah, that's true. Because you don't actually get killed or whatnot. You just go to the insane asylums and you can escape. I mean, they they, they don't leave like, the doors they, open. They, the back door is always <laughs> open. <laughs> oh, they escaped again. <laughs> You're never getting out of here, Joker. Uh, How do they keep doing that? <laughs> You're never going to get out. Hey, come back. <laughs> Did that... Joker, you're never getting out of here. You gave me a cell with a revolving door. <laughs> you didn't even lock it. You, didn't you even put, close it. You put me in the cell that doesn't have an outside wall. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like it's hanging over a cliff either. I can just walk away. <laughs> you actually have a slide to take me to the front gate, which is open. And there's a car waiting for me. It is cushioned at the bottom of the slide, too. Whee! Why is there a limo driver standing outside holding a sign with my knee? Name on it. <laughs> uh, anyways, moving Only on. Only if we wrote for the comics. <laughs> Not in my day. Back in my day, they never would allow that, Jim. Shut up, Sean's Blake. number one? Uh, Sean's was uh, Shermer, Illinois. Ah. Uh, Jeannie of Hobie. All right. Jeannie. She had Gotham. No! <laughs> Kingsbury from Howl's Moving Castle. Okay. Uh, That's kind of uh, from Stormlight series. U R I T H I R U. That is an absolutely phenomenal uh, book series. Okay, uh, Brigadoon uh, had to have a musical reference. Jim went Schmigadoon. I went Schmigadoon. I saw okay. Brigadoon on there. I'm like, I'm gonna go Schmigadoon. <laughs> and then one of my son's favorite shows of all time, Gravity Falls. Uh, great show. Great show. Uh, Steve had everything I learned from movies. Everything. I he had, hey, Brian, you're yeah. on uh, Everything I Learned from Movies this week. Yeah, their episode just dropped uh, for Drop ap- April. Yep. Uh, I was on for the Rampage episode. Drop it like it's hot. No, just read the list, please. Uh, Skull <laughs> Island, King Kong. Is that a city or a town? It's an island. Oh. <laughs> He's the mayor. I, I did a planet, so. Well, they had John C. Riley's in a town in it. A little village. Okay. Uh, Genovia, question mark, from X-Men. Genova, I think, is what he's talking about. From X Men, yeah. When Magneto made his own Genosha, Genosha, Genosha. yeah. It is. Oh, okay, you were close, Jason. Yeah, I was, I it says Gen- Gen- Genovia. Gen- so. Genovia. Is, does he say what it's from? X Men. Okay, because Genovia is from the Princess Diaries. Yes. Okay, this is G E N O V I A. That's, that's from, from the, the Princess, Princess Diaries. Well, he put X Men, <laughs> and then he put question mark actually yeah. after Genu. It's Genosha. There you go. Uh, again. <laughs> Gotham. <laughs> Stop it. I mean, and maybe everyone wants to go just be a criminal. A criminal. Maybe everybody who listens to the show are criminals. Uh, Saints of Mir- uh, Mira, which is from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. <laughs> season of the Witch one? Yeah. Ooh. And Asamanston, which is from Expendables 3. <laughs> I don't know what how that was supposed to be pronounced, but Brian is over here regretting <laughs> being here. Uh, Brian Ow, former Our. Canadian of the Year. Our, A-U-E-R, Our. He had Bloodhaven from Nightwing. No! <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a step up from Gotham. Number four, Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Star City from Green Arrow. I wonder who the mayor is. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. I wonder who Green Arrow is. Didn't they blow up half of Star City in the comics? Uh, that's Green Lantern's uh, town. They blow up Coast oh, City. Coast City. Yeah. Okay. Star City. Star City, they blew up the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Springfield from G.I. Joe. I don't know if that's great either. Cobra's attacking. And number one, Mossy uh, Isley. Most, Most Isley. Isley. Most Isley. I would still like to buy a used car from Cobra Commander. <laughs> 
Because uh, oh, that's where we're going to start. It, oh, I forgot something from my list. Hold on. i got to make an adjustment to my list. Jacoba, at Tweets by Jacoba. He had Quahog from Family Guy. Good pick. Hawkins, Indiana from Stranger Things. Ooh. Thought about it, but yep. then, yeah, no, that mall turns in disastrous. <laughs> Speaking of criminals, Liberty City and Grand Theft Auto. Oh, yeah. yeah. I tried to think Vice of a city. video game where a, a city would be a good city, but they are all pretty shitty cities. Agrabar from Aladdin. And Bedford Falls from It's a Wonderful Life. Aww. Uh Then he had, let's see here. Uh, TPC Cafe, which is the Pop Culture Cafe podcast. They had Hooterville from Green Acres. Green, Green Acres, Acres is the place to be. Mayberry Far from Andy Griffith Show. Is the life for me. Springfield. Springfield, Springfield. So get ready. Gotham. Oh. But from the 1960s Batman TV show. Oh. Well, I'm not sure. Still terrible. It just says Batman TV show. So it could be either one. I'm guessing it's the 60s. And then number one. Just as long as you have shark spray. <laughs> never know yeah, where to get rid of them. Yeah, thank you for stealing the line around. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's the first thing that popped into my head. Bedrock uh, from Fred uh, from the Flintstones. 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 Meet the Flintstones. There. Modern Stone, Stone Age family. family. From the town of Bedrock. There a place right out of history. Let's ride. With the family down the street, through the courtesy of Fred's two feet. When uh, you're with the Flintstones, have a yabba dabba do time. A yabba do time. We'll have a gay old time. So, what do you want to add to your list? Do you want to add what? Gilligan's Island? We all uh, It's a terrible, terrible place. So I mean, I everybody add- else can get off except for them. <laughs> That's true. Even the Harlem Globetrotters visited. Uh huh. <laughs> but no, I forgot, I wanted to add Strong Badia. Oh, Come that's a good to one. The, the place, place where, where tropical breezes, breezes blow. Come to the coolest place I know. So good. Population tire. Uh, bad. So the oh. ones are always cold. Oh yes. Uh, wrap this sucker up here. Uh, bad idea of the week. Number 822. Buying a farm uh, with a bunch of animals that you're not equipped to take care of. Ding. There you go. <laughs> Ding. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Jim, thanks for joining us. I'm glad I could be here. And uh, Roger says goodbye. Oh, or, titles for the yeah, show, real Roger quick. Says titles for the show. I had rules of tarot cards. Uh, I had... <laughs> rules. I was thinking rolls. <laughs> like, well, <yeah. laughs> like jelly rolls. Uh, hey, bub. Hey, bub. I have the the Shazam show up. (laughs) The Shazam show up? (laughs) And that's all I had. Go ahead. I had, I just put this into my mouth. (laughs) Barbie driving Jugs XL. (laughs) I was going to put that. A big cosmic blender (laughs) or Galactic Galactus's smoothie machine. (laughs) Uh, he's a little creepy, that Force Ghost. <laughs> I did have, uh, I had, that Force Ghost is creepy. <laughs> and the back door is always open. <laughs> the back door is always open. Other than the couple of Jeffs, I also had, you're a disease. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, let's see. I had, um, put that in your mouth. <laughs> Don't say that to your child. Um, it's a good gummy. It's a good gummy. It's uh, like a condom. <laughs> it does. Oh, it looks like an unused condom. Uh, and then, what the fuck condom did you ever put on? <laughs> I did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, normal people call those finger cotton. <laughs> Are you dealing with trying to deal with film? <laughs> Mine were made of wicker. Shut up. Uh, and then lastly, I had full hearts. Dot, dot, dot. You idiot. <laughs> full hearts, you idiot. Anyways. Uh, what do we got here? What are we doing? Uh, the back door is always open. I do like the back door is always open. The back door is always open. Hey, that's classy. Classy. Well, it, it, we're just talking about the uh, <laughs> Arkham Asylum. <laughs> God dang it, Gordon. Did you forget this again? <laughs> wait, wait. 
There is a there's a back door. <laughs> there's a lock on it. Meanwhile, Solomon Grundy's like, I didn't know that. <laughs> I've been in here. I've been crashing through the wall. <laughs> Solomon Grundy, crush car. Uh, Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. From Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. Not so bad. There's a history. It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. The history of bad ideas. Podcast. Oh, yes. You've been listening to Hobie.